Hey everybody, welcome to my shop. Just want to present you with a quick hand tool tip. I've been pretty vocal in places like Wood Talk Online, in my own blog, about work aids, jigs and kind of gimmickry, especially when it comes to hand tool work. There are a lot of things on the market that are supposed to make our job easier and a lot of times I feel they either make it take longer or they prevent you from learning essential skills, kind of like never taking the training wheels off your bike. Well, I got to be honest, I've been known to buy a few of those gadgets. One of them is this Veritas chamfer guide. Um, in fact, one of the reasons I have this Veritas block plane, it's a great plane, but I already had a really good Lee Nielsen. I picked up this Veritas plane primarily because it fits this chamfer guide. When you remove the sliding front plate, the chamfer guide fits in there and you can set it so that you make repeatable chamfers. Just by referencing this fence up against the board, you've got to set it a certain way so that you get, you basically plane until it stops cutting and then you've got consistent chamfers. Well, there is an essential skill here that I think we should understand how to do and that's cutting identical angle chamfers, same depth around a board without any kind of jigs. And it's really very simple. Just using these, your fingers, as a fence, you can create exactly identical chamfers all the way around a board to the same angle, the same depth, and they look perfect. And it takes no time at all. I'll take my block plane and I'll kind of sight down this direction and I want to look and see what angle I want. And I'll determine this is the angle of the chamfer I want. I'll take my fingers, I'll put my two first fingers in front of the blade, but I'll press them right up against the wood. They make contact with the bottom of the blade. My index finger, my ring finger, and my pinky finger go on the other side of the blade. So my fingers are actually straddling the blade right now. I don't want to cut, my own, cut myself this way. Just grab it, set the angle I want, and then with my knuckles pressed right up against the wood, I have a really stable platform that I can now plane at a consistent angle. And I don't move my hand, all I have to do is come back and press my knuckles right up against the board, and it's essentially my depth stop used to recreate the same angle with every single pass. Once I've got that angle started, once I've got the chamfer started, you may find that you need to adjust your body position a little bit as you work your way down the board. Keep your fingers referenced properly and you won't change the angle of that chamfer no matter how long the board is, no matter how far you have to walk alongside it to complete that cut. You now the only other thing to pay attention to is if for some reason you don't take full passes as you're getting started or maybe you want to set that angle right down here on this end of the board and then extend it down, it's one way to do it but just keep an eye on your chamfer to make sure that you've got the same depth of cut all the way along the board. If you really need help on that, some simple layout lines with a marking gauge or a pencil will work just fine. Now when you turn the corner and say I wanted to put a chamfer all the way around the edge of this board, well what you want to do is tackle the cross grain and cut the chamfer until you get a nice mitered corner where this chamfered edge meets the cross grain as the cross grain chamfer becomes the same angle and the same depth, you'll get this little mitered looking point right on the edge. So you can see I've started a chamfer on the cross grain and I've got my existing completed one right here. Right now, they don't line up. You want to continue to make passes until they meet at a mitered point. And now you can see that line, that nice little mitered line that tells you your chamfers meet and are equal on both faces. When you get that, 
you know you're equal and you can stop planing. And that's all there is to it. This can give you exact duplicate chamfers everywhere you go. So can a couple of fingers. And this is a perfect example of where a jig might make things easier to start with, but if you don't learn that essential skill, you'll never learn it. And now you've become a better woodworker by skipping the jig and just using what God gave you. Thanks, see you next time.